Okay, everybody, it is time for Promancing the Stones, the series where I seek to find my one true pro Go player soulmate. The pro I want to emulate, the pro whose games I want to memorize and study, and the pro who is like the highest ideal of what I want to be in my games. Today, we are looking at Killer Kato Masao. And we have three games for you as usual. Um, let me, let me double check what years they're from. Kato Masao played for a long time and is totally old school. Um, now let's close Fox. We have a game from 1968, a game from 1988, and a game from 2002. So this should be pretty, pretty amazing. So let's dive in. This first game is from 1968. It is uh, Fujisawa Hozai versus Kato Masao. Uh, Fujisawa is 9 Pro and Kato is 5 Pro. And this is the 24th Japanese Honinmo League. Oh, Fujisawa opens with a 3-3. Kato with a 3-4. 3-4, 3-4. We got an enclosure, another enclosure. So this is 1968, so this is totally old school. Uh, takes the extension after the enclosure. It's a perfect pincer. And we play out a pretty normal Joseki. Whoa. Oh, this is a little different than I expected. <laughs> but I, it feels like it makes sense, I guess. All right. And Kato takes this chance to extend. Build a base. So already I feel like they're fighting. Okay. I feel like Kato's very territory-oriented right now. Black is getting a whole lot on the right-hand side. Like, I would, I would be scared in this position as white. But it looks like Kato's playing calmly. Connecting his stuff. And disconnecting his opponent. Okay, finally, something with the 3-3 three, three gets played. Pretty normal Joseki here. Black still feels like he has a lot on the right-hand side. But white has a huge lower left corner, right? So like I like to say, I am a lowly, like, three, between 3 and 5 Q. Um, so you're not going to get the in-depth commentary you might get from other commentators on pro games. But we're here just mainly to find the feeling of the games that these particular pros are playing. And then once I find my true pro soulmate, uh, we can do some more in-depth study of some of their games. So Kato Masao is famous for being someone who kills large dragons on the board. I think he was called Killer Kato. Uh, he wrote the book Attack and Kill, as well as the book uh, The Chinese Opening. Both very informative. Attack and Kill is actually one of my favorite, favorite Go books. <laughs> I bet that surprises all of you, doesn't it? There is a lot going on in chat. I can't keep up with it. But I, I appreciate the interesting conversations. Okay, making some shape, gaining some territory. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Is this group on the left alive? I guess it is. I guess it is. I guess it is. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's a lot. Oh, <laughs> it scared me, Black. <laughs> hmm, Twitch sometimes pauses the stream. Are we dropping frames? 
It doesn't seem like we're dropping frames. I did update um, my OBS recently, but I haven't changed any of the settings to to use the new NVENC. Yeah. Okay, where were we in the game? White is finally attacking the top. Oh, they're playing Endgame already? What? What is this? That was weird. Let's go back. Why? Why this? That doesn't make sense to me. I like Kato as well. Um, I haven't really... I like, I like the books he's written. I haven't really looked at his game. And I picked these games largely at random. Just something from his early career, something from his mid-career, and then something uh, towards the end of his career. Hmm. Fujisawa Hosai is holding their own pretty well. Of course, this is a 5 pro versus a 9 pro match, so he would it kind of stands to reason, right? That the 9 pro is holding their own against the 5 pro. Oh! That is the end of the game, you guys. Wait, what? Why is that the end of the game? It's the result is white plus resign. Is black that far behind? What what am I not seeing that I need to be able to see here? Oh golly. I think I see it. The left is dead. That's why the throw in. The dragon did die. It did die. Oh, that's fantastic. I didn't quite realize it. Yeah, it's all dead. All of it. Can't he connect? No, he can't. Attack and Kill. Yeah, it's a great book. It's a pretty quick read. I think it's informative. Oh, that's what this was about. Oh, I understand now. Brilliant! I love it! Like, when the Observer doesn't even realize it all died. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. That's a beautiful kill. All right. We're off to a good start. Let's find... Let's... Let's open the next one. This game is Takamiya Masaki versus Kato Masao in 1988. This is the 36th Japanese Orza title match number three. Um, I know there's a lot of Takamiya fans out there, and I do like some of his sayings and stuff, so I wanted to see how these two interacted on the go board. Takamiya with the 4-4. Four, four. Response. Oh, the diagonal response doesn't want a cross game. What the heck? Everybody's playing four fours. You love the book How Not to Play Go. I don't. Who is that by? Oh my gosh. San Rensei? Really, Takamiya? Oh my gosh. San Rensei? Really, Kato Misao? Is this a mirror game? <laughs> What? <laughs> and this is why you don't play Mirago. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, what is happening? You guys. Oh, this is a great takedown. You guys, we're learning how to take down Moyos now. 
So he just played on the sector line and pushed in. And then came back and connected. Push, push, connect. Oddly enough, Takamiya was the first one to invade. Because Takamiya is known more for taking influence than looking for a tiny bit of territory. Takamiya. Why you play ladder? <laughs> Oh no. Oh, I think I know what's happening here. <laughs> okay, talk to me connected. I did look at Sakata AO. That was like third or fourth in this series. And if you check out my YouTube, you can find those. I really love Sakata AO. Yeah, I, I love he's in my top three. He really is. Okay, Ane at the head, yep. Get as much out of it as possible and expand. So here's Takamiya doing what Takamiya does best with the influence. Hmm. Oops. <laughs> oh, Takamiya. That's like that's like a my level mistake right there. That oh dear. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Maybe there's still hope. Maybe it doesn't matter. Yeah, Flater Mouse, for sure. Yep, there's the the whole series, it's in a it's in a what do you call it? It's like a grouping or a uh what do you call it? I made a Promancing the Stones group on my YouTube, so you can check out all the videos if you want to. Collection. It's called a collection. That's what the word I'm thinking of. Alright, so now Kato is just gonna live on the right. And erase Black's territory. Oh, this is not good for Black at all. I mean, I guess Black got this entire area here. Go Sagan was your favorite, Twitchy? Oh, how cool. Yeah, Go Sagan's a phenomenal player. And I like his story as well. I really like uh, like underdogs or outcasts who, who rise up from difficult situations. That's a, that's a thing that I find charming, I guess. Kitani. Mm. <laughs> I know you're a Kitani fan, Peyton. I know, I know. Bunch of Katani fanboys in, in our audience. <laughs> okay. Is it endgame now? Nah, it feels a little more... A little more different than endgame. So Kato did get a big kill this game, though. This is kind of big. But... He had to trade, like, this whole area for it. So maybe that's not so great? But that right there is the end of the game, and it is Kato plus Resign. White plus Resign. Erasing this over here was massive. I feel like White has all the points. That's not necessarily true, though. Let's see if Score Estimator will, will do a good job for us. See, Score Estimator says black plus 20. Oh, no. You wrong. You wrong. Um, the rest looks. Is that accurate? It's white plus ten. Okay, white plus ten. You guys, roughly.
Score estimator is probably a little bit wrong, but I probably counted stuff over on the left that doesn't really exist. Mm hmm. Anyway, good game. Let's open another one. This is Kobayashi Koichi versus Kato Masao in 2002. This is the 11th Japanese Ryusei semifinal. Hello, Ribbon A. Uh, Kobayashi opens 4-4. Four, four. Interesting. Nice, Fuseki. And the immediate Tanuki. Nice. <laughs> Double approach from Kobayashi. Attach. Standard Joseki here, I guess. What? Is this normal? Sure. <laughs> it is now. <laughs> I don't know this one if this is a normal sequence. So pardon my ignorance here. This does not feel normal to me, you guys. All right. Well, it feels like kind of an even result. White got the corner and black got a lot of influence over here. What? Kato, what are you doing, Kato? This is some AlphaGo stuff before AlphaGo. <laughs> Was that a ladder breaker? Oh, okay. I understand. Got it. Taking lots of points in the corner. Black comes out. Or settles. Which one? Oh, that's fun. White just wants. Oh, white just wants the side. All right, I gotta look at that again. Cross cut. Atari. Come out. Cut. Connect. Extend. And now we have a wall facing facing our other other stuff. That's neat. That was really neat. Yeah, I love I love players that show their character on the board. <laughs> oh, really? Honinbo Shue started go late and hit his peak at 44. That is inspiring. <laughs> You're right, Peyton. Because I started go late. And I am 40 years old. <laughs> it's never too late, y'all. Never too late. Okay. So, oh, they are fighting. So, Kobayashi really isn't known for his fighting, but it's nice to see him fight, you know? Or maybe I'm wrong about that. Am I wrong about that? Or am I thinking of a different Kobayashi? <laughs> wow. Okay. I'm having a lot of trouble determining, like, what's happening on this board. This happens to me periodically during our pro reviews. Like, all the time, I mean. <laughs> and, okay. He's not trying to cut and kill this? Hmm, interesting. I feel like Kobayashi is getting a lot through these tactical exchanges. I 
And black has a lot on the bottom as well. And white feels a little points poor. But I'm not sure by how much. He was once called Tokyo Subway by Takamiya because he loved playing second line moves and grab dumb territories. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the Kobayashi I was thinking of. Oh, he didn't want the co? Maybe he felt it was bad timing. Oh, it's like endgame, endgame. All the endgame. Endgame, 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 endgame. Oh dear. What's happened? Is this a Seki? No. Is it? No. Nope. No Seki. And game and game and game. <laughs> this would. I'm like, <gasps> oh yeah, it's fine. <laughs> oh, the end game. Okay, this game actually made a ten game result. Okay, oh, though. Kobayashi Koichi one by two and a half. Black by two and a half points. Still a really great game. I was a little surprised earlier on that White didn't try to split this and take these stones, uh, but I guess the timing elsewhere was more important. Um, yeah, but really, really great game. Uh, Kato Masao also made a lot of big changes um, to Japanese Go, like he changed Komi and did a bunch of other cool stuff. You can look him up on Wikipedia. Um, I said Kato Masao did that. Yes. Um, you can look him up on Wikipedia or Sensei's library and find more about him. Uh, really interesting fellow. Uh, again, his books, I do recommend his books. Um, and the play style, like, I didn't, I didn't get that gush of feeling from the play style, but I do really appreciate the kills and um, the aggression, especially from the time period that he grew up in as a Go player. So that's, that's really, really awesome. 